everyone, Maya here from My Storybook, and welcome to today's interactive read aloud. I am so excited that you are here to join me for My Storybook Special Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month reading event, where every weekday this month I will be sharing a new interactive read aloud featuring an Asian character or a children's book created by an Asian author and or illustrator. There are so many amazing stories we are going to be sharing this month, so if you're curious about what we've already read or what we will be reading next, you can find the whole read aloud lineup on my storybooks blog by clicking on that description link down below. Or you can also subscribe to my storybook YouTube channel and follow along with our Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month playlist, where you'll find all of our reading adventures for this month. And before we get started, I want to give you a little background about the book. So this story is about refugees in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Refugees are people who have to leave their own home because of fear or because it's dangerous and go to live somewhere else. Now, at the time that this book was written, there were over 20 million refugees in the world, and a lot of them were children. Families had to leave with their children, especially because you want to have your children live somewhere where it's safe. And this story today, my friends, is based on refugees in a camp called Peshawar which is a city on the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan. War in Afghanistan caused many Afghanis to have to flee their homes, and a lot of them settled in the camp in Peshawar. They found this place just to stay safe and away from the danger. And if you notice, my friends, there's no buildings for homes. It really is just like a camp with tents and everything for them to live in. It's not for them to live in forever. The goal is to hopefully be able to resettle in a different country. Resettle means to go find somewhere else to live, a new place to settle down and live. Some people and some refugees are able to come to America and resettle in America. And in this story, you're going to see some refugees, some young girls who are able to resettle in America. And now, even though well, this story takes place in Peshawar, their experience, these refugee girls' experience, are very similar to refugees' experiences all over the world. So I would love you to give me a double thumbs up if you're ready to begin this read aloud. Excellent. Let's get started. So the title of today's interactive read aloud is Four Feet, Two Sandals, written by Karen Lynn Williams and Kadra Mohammed, and illustrated by Doug Chaika. So that means that there were two authors who wrote this book, since I see two names there, and then one illustrator who drew all the pictures. And this book is published by Erdman's Young Readers, so big thank you to them for letting us share this reading adventure together. Now, let's take a look at the cover, and what do you notice, my friends? Right, I see two girls, and if I look at the setting where the story takes place, I notice it is in the desert area, right? There's not a lot of green trees or anything. It looks very dry. I see some tents in the background. They're carrying some baskets. And what do you notice going on here with their sandals? Looks like they are both wearing just one sandal, the same pair of sandals, but one girl has one shoe and the other girl has the other shoe. That makes me think of the title, Four Feet Two Sandals. Hmm, what do you think of that title? <coughs> right? Maybe because there's the girls have four feet, but there's only two sandals. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm curious to see what's going on. Let's get started. So here's our title page. It has the title of our story, our authors, and our illustrator, and our publisher down here. And here I can see a larger, a bigger view of the camp site that they are in, the refugee camp. What do you notice? Lots of different tents, lots of different color tents. Lena raced barefoot to the camp entrance where relief workers threw used clothing off the back of a truck. Everyone pushed and fought for the best clothes. Lena squatted and reached, grabbing what she could. So Lena oh, must be one of the girls in the refugee camp. And at the entrance, relief workers are bringing used clothing. So relief workers are workers who help the refugees. They bring them clothes and food and water. And it looks like they are dropping off some new clothes and everyone's trying to get some of the new clothes, right? Lena's trying to grab and get some as well. Because, my friends, if they need new clothes, it's not like there's any store nearby right here where they live. So they have people come help bring them some clothes. The crowd began to leave. In the dust at Lena's feet lay a brand new sandal. It was yellow with a blue flower in the middle, and when she slipped it on her foot, it fit perfectly. Lena was 10, but she had not worn shoes for two years. 
for two years, she had no shoes, my friend. She just went around barefoot. My friends, how old are you? And when was the last time you wore shoes? Probably even earlier today, right? She's been living in this refugee camp, it, though, it seems, for a long time. And since they don't get many clothes and shoes, this is the first time she's wearing a shoe in two years. She looked around for the matching sandal. A girl stood nearby. She was thinner and darker than Lena, and she wore a blue and yellow sandal. Oh, hmm. Do you see her, my friends? Well, here's Lena with one sandal, and then here is... Hmm. Assalamu alaikum. Lena greeted her. Peace be with you. The girl only stared. She was dressed in a shallow kameez. Her feet were cracked and swollen as Lena's had been when she first arrived at the camp. Suddenly, the girl turned, taking the matching sandal with her. Oh, so it seems like Lena has been at the camp for a while and the girl, though, is new. How does Lena know she's new? Because her feet are cracked and dry. I'm thinking that they had to walk a long way to get to this camp. So she has one sandal. Lena has the other sandal. What are they going to do, my friends? <coughs> In the morning, Lena went to do the washing, wearing one beautiful sandal. She picked her way to the stream, careful to keep her sandal out of the filth. Her old shoes had been ruined on the many miles of walking from Afghanistan to Peshawar, the refugee camp in Pakistan. She had carried her brother Najib, no bigger than a water jug then, but just as heavy. So to get to these refugee camps when they leave their home, a lot of the refugees have to walk a very, very far away. And if you're walking a very far away, can you bring a lot of stuff with you? It'd be too heavy, right? So it seems like you can only bring just a very few things. And then she had to carry her little brother. So I don't think she really could carry anything of her own, right? When she looked up from her scrubbing, the girl from yesterday was standing over her. She wore one sandal that she bent over and removed. Grandma says it's stupid to wear only one. She placed the sandal at Lena's feet. Then she turned and walked away. Wait! Lena grabbed both sandals and followed her. I am Lena. The girl turned slowly. I am Feroza. Lena held the sandals out. We can share, Lena said. But what good is one sandal for two feet, Feroza said. How do you think they're going to share the sandals? You wear them both today and I will wear them tomorrow, Lena smiled. Four feet, two sandals. Feroza smiled too. She took the sandals and put them on. Tomorrow, they will be yours. Oh, so what is Lena's idea? But they take turns wearing them, so they both get to wear both of them at the same time. But they'll switch days. Oh, and who has the sandals in this picture, my friend? Yep, over here on the end. Looks like Lena has the sandals on. The two girls greeted each other as they carried their jugs of water for the next day. Lena put the sandals on, and they waited together in a long line. Oh, my friends, and what do you notice about how they get their water? Like they have to get their water from a well. A well is a deep hole that has water and you have to put down a bucket and then you pull the water up and then you can fill your jug. How do you get water, my friends? If you're thirsty at your home, how do you get water? <coughs> you just get it from the fridge or the faucet, right? You can just turn it on. Well, in this camp here, it seems like first they have to wait in a line. Look how long the line is just to get water. And then they have to get it up from a well. Everyone in the camp was waiting for a new home. Mama went to meetings about being resettled. So resettle means finding a new place to live. The girls stayed in Lena's tent with Ismatu and Najib. They were careful to keep the sandals away from the two boys. For Ismatu wanted to pull all the flowers and Najib wanted to chew on them. My father and sister were killed in the war, Lena told her friend. Mama and I had to run with Ismatu and Najib in the night. Feroza nodded and two tears ran down her cheek. I have only my grandmother now. Oh dear, my friends. War causes a lot of death of families, right? A lot of death and destruction. And it seems like both of these girls lost people very important to them in their family. So remember, again, a lot of refugees have to leave their homes because it's no longer safe. And that means that they could have also lost family along the way. When they did not have work to do, Lena and Feroza crept up to the windows of the school and peeked inside. 
The school was small with only enough room for the boys to study. The girls practiced their names in the dirt and brushed the marks away so no one would see their mistakes. Sometimes each girl wore one sandal. Other children pointed and giggled, but Lena and Feroza did not care. Mm. So I notice here, like, the boys are in the schoolroom. They are practicing their names. So it seems there that the boys went to school. The girls weren't really expected to go to school, but these girls wanted to learn and practice their names anyways, right? In the evenings, the sky turned deep blue, and the first stars began to sparkle. Lena and Feroza watched for the silver of the crescent moon that signaled the beginning of Ramadan. They shared memories and whispered their dreams for a new home. So Ramadan, my friends, is a special Muslim holiday. It's a month of fasting. Fasting means that you do not eat for a certain amount of time. During Ramadan, they don't eat from sunrise to sunset. So during the day, they don't eat. But at nighttime, they celebrate and have a big feast. So when you don't eat for a while, it is called fasting. And the reason they do this is to show their dedication and faith to their religion and what they believe in. So at nighttime, when they're going to have their feast and celebrations, the two girls whisper their hopes and dreams. What are their hopes and dreams? To find a new home, right? One morning, they went to the stream and washed their sandals to keep them looking new. Oh, so it looks like they do all their cleaning in the river here, in the water. Lena, come quick! Feroza's grandmother called. Your mother says your name is on the list! Oh, Feroza grabbed the sandals and the two girls ran ahead to the office. The list? So what do you think that means if their name is on the list? Where do you think? The list to what? Hmm. Lena stood on tiptoes and squinted at the sign. Mama's name, it's here. We are going to America. She looked at her friend. So if you're on the list, that means you're going to get resettled to America. How do you think Lena feels? Excited? My name is not there, Feroza said quietly. She looked at her feet as she spoke. Hmm. So Lena's getting to go, but Feroza's name still isn't on there. How do you think that might make Lena feel now? She's probably happy she gets to go, right? But sad to leave her friend behind. Feroza then bent down and took the sandals off. She handed them to Lena. You cannot go barefoot to America. Feroza gave Lena a hug. Oh, that is so kind, right? So how do you think Feroza feels right now, seeing Lena's name on there? So Feroza's probably sad, too, that she doesn't get to go and her family can't go, but it seems like she's also really happy for Lena, her friend, just giving her a hug, letting her wear the sandals. Lena and Feroza are very good friends. When it was time to leave, the relief worker gave Mama a large square white bag with numbers on it. All of your important papers are in this bag, he said. Feroza and grandmother came to say goodbye. Lena pointed at her feet. Look, Mama saved her sewing money. She has bought us shoes for America. Oh, if we look over here, look at Lena's shoes. So Lena has new shoes. So if Lena has shoes, what do you think are going to happen to the sandals? Maybe she'll give them to Feroza. Real shoes. Feroza admired the black leather. Here, Lena said, it's your day to wear these. The tears in her eyes were not for the sandals. Why was Lena, why did Lena have tears in her eyes? Sad to leave for Rosa. Assalamu alaikum, Rosa said as she took the faded yellow and blue sandals. Peace be with you. Lena followed the others to the bus. So she's giving for Rosa the sandals. Is, is Lena ever going to get a turn with the sandals again? She's leaving the camp, right? It seems like she's giving for Rosa the sandals so that she can have them at the camp. So Lena followed the others to the bus. Wait, Rosa called as she ran to her friend. You must keep one. She handed Lena one sandal. What good is one sandal? It is good to remember, Rosa held up the other sandal. Four feet, two sandals. Why is she giving Lena one of the sandals? You can't go around wearing just one sandal. That's not very useful. Why is she giving Lena one then? <laughs> to remember her by, right? It is good to remember. My friend's friendship and remembering each other is what is most important. Lena felt the tears make the trail down her cheek. She slipped the sandal into her bag and climbed on the bus. 
for Rosa ran alongside as the bus began to move, and Lena leaned out to the window. We will share again in America, she called. So she is waving goodbye and telling Feroza, you know what? We are going to see each other again one day in America. She believes Feroza will also get there one day. And once they're reunited again, then they will share again. Oh my goodness, my friends. How do you think Lena is feeling on this bus? She's going to America, but she's leaving her friend behind as well. Again, right, a mix of happy to be resettling in America and sad to be leaving a friend. But now she'll have this sandal to remember her by and the hope that they will see each other again in America one day. The end. So here's just a note from the author, some more information about refugees and especially the refugees in Afghanistan and Pakistan and Peshawar where this story took place. All right, my friends, what a touching story. A touching story means one that gives you a lot of feelings on the inside, too. We got to read a bit about the refugee experience, what life is like living in a refugee camp after you had to leave your own home, the waiting to be resettled and finding a new place to live, and how even though these people and these girls had to leave their home and and live in these camps that weren't as nice as their own homes. So even though my friends, they had to leave their homes and live in these camps that weren't really as nice as their own homes, right? We saw that instead of just giving up hope and being angry about it, did the best they could, right? They got their water, they washed their clothes, they were made friends, they were kind to each other. They formed a community and made this campsite their new home, a little temporary home, a home that wasn't forever, but they made it a place where they could live and share love and kindness with each other as well still. That shows me, friends, how strong refugees are and how brave they are. Even with all the hard things that they are going through, they are still able to keep on going and show that strength, love, and courage to share that with each other is very important. All right, my friends, what is something you learned or you liked about this story? Right. I thought their friendship was very nice, right? I really liked how they shared the sandals and they took turns. Instead of one girl just taking them, they were really kind friends and they shared them. And I thought it was very sweet at the end, right? Where she gave Lena one sandal to take with her so that they always have that to remember each other by. All right, my friends. Well, if you'd like to learn more about refugees and the refugee crisis going on, you can always do some more research or find other stories about refugee children and refugee stories. There's a bunch out there and it's always important to learn about what else is going on in the world and what other people are experiencing as well. Otherwise, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today's interactive read aloud. And if you did enjoy today's reading adventure, please subscribe to my storybook YouTube channel to keep up with the rest of our read alouds for this month. You can do that by clicking on that subscribe button and giving this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions for me, would like to share with me some of your own reading adventures and experiences, please reach out to me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, social media, on the blog. All of those social media links can be found down there below. Otherwise, my friends, that brings us to the end of today's interactive read aloud. So until next time, happy reading.